We had 72 hours notice for receiving the first patient. The first question was, did we have the ability to care for these patients? And the second question was, could we do it safely? And if the answer to both of those were yes, then it was really not a question of whether we should, um, we, we would. When Dr. Brantley walked in the door of our hospital, the game just totally changed. We also had to address the public fears, which was new to us because we believe in patient privacy. However, we also believe in transparency. Uh, we're looking very much forward to assisting this individual uh, in receiving the best care they possibly can receive. And we feel that we have the environment and expertise to safely care for these patients and offer them the maximum opportunity for recovery from these infections. We had four physicians during the first week that we ha had patients here um, in our unit. And two of the physicians had the bulk of their days occupied by media and then administrative issues. Talking with the media and um, constantly updating the public, I think were important endeavors that we had to do uh, in order to um, allay some of the fear. There was a need to in communicate intensely internally and externally about care of patients with Ebola virus disease and our capabilities and, and um, uh, our ability to both care for the patients but to keep our uh, staff and our community safe. There was an enormous amount of anxiety, a lot of concern voiced both in the media and to us in terms of emails and letters and so on. And frankly, we viewed this as an opportunity for education. My goal and my job, I, I felt very importantly, was to be sure that the staff were not distracted by that. It was really important that uh, we trusted one another. And because of that, our team is incredibly close, even today. And it was remarkable to me how quickly our team really did come together. And we felt very open to ask questions and to question what we were doing to make sure we were doing it well. We questioned each other. We questioned the protocols. And I think that is where the confidence came from. From day one, um, we became a family. And since then, we still treat each other like family. Um, it was a unique team. It was a close team. It was probably the most collaborative atmosphere I've ever worked in. You can prepare and drill and practice, but practice is not really the equivalent of having real patients in the unit. We originally did not think we would be doing anything in the way of dialysis or chest x-rays or you name it, and yet each time our patients needed a level of care that was important to their survival and well-being, we found a way to do that in a safe fashion. I suddenly noticed that everyone's lined up in the hall. And I didn't exactly know what was going on and asked if I should leave and I was told, no, just stay where you are. And then of course Ms. Wrightbowl emerges from her patient room and goes down the line and, and thanks all of the various uh, nursing staff and people and she got next to me and shook my hand and had no idea who I was and I had to tell her that you know I feel like I know you because I've been working on your patient samples but I haven't been in your room to, to say hello um, and that was it was very gratifying she is such a pleasant gracious person and it was just uh, really nice to, to see her emerge uh, virus free at that point. So when Kent Brantley was discharged from the hospital, we knew it was coming. That we actually had to have a couple of days of preparation as he, he and we wanted to have a press conference announcing it. You know, as there was build up to that, I think that there, there really was a, a, an overwhelming sense of accomplishment that we had, had done a, a really tremendous thing here. Today is a miraculous day. I'm thrilled to be alive to be well, and to be reunited with my family. That was a very important message uh, that he felt compelled to deliver. And in part, uh, the press conference was an opportunity to reassure 
the country about uh, the ability to successfully uh, care for patients and to be a survivor of Ebola virus disease and to be uh, someone who could be touched and could be hugged. I think the more emotional point was when our third patient, Dr. Crozier, Ian Crozier, was discharged. For most of the 40 days he spent with us in the serious communicable diseases unit when he was acutely ill with Ebola, um, he wasn't conscious. He wasn't able to participate in the in the day-to-day -day activities. So we knew of Dr. Crozier, but we didn't know him personally. One of the ideas that came out of that was to use convalescent plasma from a donor. The WHO flew that donor over and we, we actually took three liters of convalescent plasma from that donor. Then after that, um, Emory kind of joined forces with Nebraska and the NIH to put together sort of a group that would do a clinical trial on convalescent plasma. What was really amazing is that as Dr. Crozier recovered, um, we had that unique experience of not just treating a patient, and not just a physician, but actually an ID physician, a highly trained and uh, highly skilled and uh, highly intellectual ID physician. That was a rough, rough patch, and just to see him walk out with his family, which we got so close with, was a hugely gratifying emotional moment for me. It was an honor and a privilege to be part of the group that enabled those patients to recover. Um, the patients themselves are remarkable people. Their families are remarkable people. Thank you for your leadership in helping to educate the public about this difficult but treatable disease. It's been a remarkable opportunity not only to use our clinical skills but also to really develop a um, great collaboration across the country in getting people prepared not only for Ebola but for other outbreaks. I would say about uh, 95% of uh, what we did is now a standard protocol, not only within the Emory system, but it influences a lot of protocols in other institutions. Emory has, is the lead institution on the ASPR grant, um, which creates a national Ebola training and education center. Um, and so it's uh, Emory, Nebraska, and Bellevue as the three institutions. Our focus um, with, with, for the National Ebola Training and Education Center is really um, initially to focus on Ebola and, and get hospitals up and running and ensure that they, um, that that they have their, their protocols and practices in place. Uh, but we're also thinking about other highly infectious diseases. And really hopefully build a system across the United States where we're well prepared for the next outbreak.